Hey everybody, I'm Corinne Blackstone and welcome to my craft room. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss out on any of the crafty content that we have here. I'm so excited about this video. This is one that I kind of wish existed before I got my Cricut. What I'm going to talk to you about are the things that I wish I knew before starting with Cricut. I feel like over these past four years I have learned so much from just working with the Cricut and from watching other people work with the Cricut that I don't want you guys to struggle like a lot of us have. So hopefully this video will be that catalyst to really help you understand all sorts of things about the Cricut and you won't have to fumble around like we did. Whatever we would do, we do it just for one of the things that I think is most important to understand about the Cricut is just take it out of the box. You're not going to break the machine by practicing and playing around. It's really a sturdy machine. You cannot break this thing unless you maybe drop it off a table, so please don't do that. But just learning, playing around, cutting cardstock, cutting vinyl, things like that, you are not going to break it. So don't be intimidated by it. Just take it out and cut some simple shapes to get used to how it works and you're gonna be a rock star in no time. It's totally okay to mess up. We all do it, I still do it. So don't be afraid to mess up. That is how you learn, that is how we all learn. I still to this day make all sorts of mistakes, but that's how I learn to do things and figure out what works and what doesn't. Just because you mess something up doesn't make you a failure, it's just part of the learning process. So be kind to yourself and just know that we all make mistakes. One thing that I think is really important for people to understand about the Cricut is you don't need to use Cricut branded products with the Cricut. So one of the main things that I tell you is don't use Cricut vinyl. It's a little overpriced and honestly it's not my favorite on the market. There are way less expensive things with better quality that you can find all over the place. And that kind of rolls in to another thing that I think is really important is buying vinyl at craft stores is pretty expensive. Their markup on vinyl is really, really high where you can get it from a online retailer for a lot less money. I'll link some of my favorite online retailers and vinyl brands down below for you guys. That way you can find everything. And then I'll also have a link that's kind of got all the things that I think you really need to start with your Cricut down below as well. But just know that there is Cricut vinyl, Cricut iron on, Cricut cardstock. You don't need to use that. You don't have to. You have the option to use all sorts of things in your machine and they don't have to be Cricut branded. That includes your mats. Now people will tell you that that does void your warranty and your warranty on a Cricut is one year. However, they're probably never going to be able to tell that you use the non Cricut mat and they're way less expensive. And honestly, I found them to be of better quality. They last longer. They're thicker and heavier so they don't crack as easily. So that's just something to keep in mind. Another thing that I think is a really important kind of hack or tip is if you have a Cricut Explore, Explore Air, or an Explore Air 2, you have a dial on the side over here. Set that dial to custom and never move it. The reason I tell you that is you're never gonna forget to change your setting because it will prompt you to change your setting on your screen, just like if you had a Cricut Maker. The dial can be really easy to forget, so you may cut cardstock on a vinyl setting and it didn't cut. Or you may cut vinyl on the cardstock setting and it cuts through and that's super frustrating. So that's why I always say just leave it on custom, you'll be prompted, and you have a lot more options under the custom setting. Now I know that getting your Cricut is super exciting because I know I was really, really excited when I got mine. And I wanted to go out and buy literally everything I could find and try everything and do everything. But what I recommend is pick up a couple sheets of vinyl, pick up a couple sheets of HTV and some cardstock. That will get you started. It'll be perfect for you to start learning how to work with your machine and you can see what materials you really like to work with. Some people absolutely hate working with permanent vinyl, some people hate working with HTV and some people hate cardstock. So I would recommend starting with those three products, play around and see what you need. Then as you start to want to explore more of what you want to make, don't go out and buy a ton of the same thing. So if you want to start trying to make acrylic blanks, go to a website, buy just a few of them. 
if you want to start doing something like that, just buy a couple, see if you actually like it, and then when you discover you like it, you can obviously go buy more, but that way if you've discovered that you don't like doing that craft, you don't have thousands of them laying around your craft room. And another great place to check is your Facebook Marketplace and the D-Stash groups on Facebook as well. There's lots of crafting D-Stash groups for people that either overbought or people like me who have no choice to, but to buy in bulk, we, we only need one or two, and then we have 40 of them left over. So those are great places that you can kind of find some items for less expensive to give them a try. If you don't like them, you can sell what you have left. But definitely don't go out and go crazy and buy every piece of glitter, every color card stock, every acrylic blank, all the epoxy. Don't, don't do that. Just try, and that way you're not going to spend a ton of money and waste money on something that you realize you don't like doing. When you start learning, a great place to get blanks from is the Dollar Tree or Target Dollar Spot, Walmart, places like that. I recommend as you start, don't spend more than just a dollar or two to get used to working with certain materials. You can find wood blanks at the Dollar Tree, Target Dollar Spot. That's a great way to get used to working with wood. You can find all sorts of different things, glass plates, mugs, lots of things for really, really inexpensive to get used to working with the products and practicing your skills when it comes to vinyl application, HTV application, all sorts of things. So definitely give those a shot. Use something a little less expensive to start with, and that way if you mess it up and can't undo it, it's not a huge loss to your pocketbook. The next thing that I recommend is to get a good set of tools. Now, you can find tools all sorts of places now, from Amazon to 143 Vinyl to the Dollar Tree. So I would recommend trying a couple of different things, but don't spend a lot of money. I would just get like a tool set. I have a Nakappa tool set that I like that has a lot of different tools. You can give those a try. They're good quality and you can always upgrade your tools or buy extras if you decide you like something and you want to make sure you have more of them. Cricut does sell a tool kit. It is a nice kit. It comes with a lot of things, but it does come with a plastic scraper and that plastic scraper is a little bit harsh in my opinion. So I would recommend getting more of a flexible rubber squeegee to use with your vinyl. That way you're not gonna scratch it or damage it. Now you are gonna wanna get a mat or two to go with your machine. Most of the machines come with at least one mat, but I would recommend grabbing a couple of extras for pretty inexpensive off of Amazon. You don't need to buy these at a the craft store. They are so overpriced at the craft store. So please don't waste your money. And also don't buy a million of them. You don't need a million mats. A couple green ones, a couple blue ones, one pink and one purple will do. Now the mats, the colors actually do mean something. So green is standard grip. That's going to be for things like vinyl, some thicker, heavier card stocks and things like that. The blue is for the lighter card stocks, lighter paper, sticker paper and things like that. Then you get into pink, which is your fabric mat. I love my fabric mat, but I will say it does lose its stick pretty quickly. So if you're someone who knows that you want to cut a lot of fabric, grab a couple extras of those. And then last, we have our purple mat. That purple mat is the strong grip mat. So that's for things like basswood, chipboard. If you're going to be engraving, you want to use the strong grip mat as well. I absolutely love my strong grip mat, but I tell you, I've had the same one for two years and it's still in great condition. So that one will probably last you a little bit longer than some of the others. Now, like I said, you don't have to use a Cricut brand mat. Some of my favorite other brands are Nakappa and Monocut. Those are great brand mats. I will link everything down below. They work beautifully. They are really sticky. They last a really long time and they're easy to clean. And that's the other thing. You can clean your mats to actually create longevity with your mats. The best cleaning method that I have found for me personally, I have two options. I can spot clean using alcohol-free baby wipes, which are great if you get like dog hair or dust or anything on your mat. But if you wanna do a full clean, just some lukewarm water, Dawn dish soap, and a little scrubby brush, just take it over and clean the mat off. I'll link the video where I clean my mats down below for you as well. But that is the best way to clean them. You're not gonna damage them. A lot of people will say that you can restick your mats using all sorts of different glues, and that's not something that I personally recommend. Because if you happen to get that glue outside of the original glue square, it can gum up your machine and actually damage it. So for the expense of a mat, which are pretty inexpensive, especially when you can find them on Lightning Deal, which they go on all the time on Amazon, it's not worth it to me to risk ruining my very expensive machine just to restick a pretty inexpensive mat. 
Another thing that you want to make sure is with your mats, you keep that plastic protective sheet that is on them. That sheet actually has two sides to it, so before I ever start using a mat, I like to put a colored sticker on top of my mat. I'll sometimes just use a scrap piece of vinyl, and I will put that on top of the clear sheet so that I know which side goes down. That way it keeps the adhesive even stickier longer. And another thing to note is that you can actually put the mat in both ways. You'll have the top side that has the hole in it for hanging and then the bottom side that doesn't have the hole. You can put it in top or bottom first. You won't be able to put it in sideways, but you can definitely put it in either way. It does not matter. One thing that is super important that you get is some transfer tape. Now, not all transfer tape is created equal, and you'll see a lot of people, including me in the beginning, telling you to use contact paper from the Dollar Tree. It's a dollar for like 18 feet, and I have to say, I'm not a fan. The more that I used it, the more I realized it's not really transfer tape, and it actually causes a lot more problems than it fixes. If you leave that transfer tape on too long, the contact paper, it will actually leave residue on your vinyl, and it's really hard to get that residue off. Also, if you're pressing your vinyl onto some surfaces, it will also leave residue on those surfaces, so it's really important that you use a real transfer tape. I recommend Style Tech brand, StarCraft, Craftables, all sorts of different brands of real transfer tape, and again, I'll link everything down below for you, but they are some of the best out there, and I have tested so many transfer tapes, so don't fall into that, oh, it's only a dollar, it's not worth it if you're going to be ruining your projects because it's not really transfer tape. Another great thing about transfer tape is that it can be reused over and over again. So if you're doing a project and you're putting multiple things on, you can absolutely just reuse your transfer tape. I've been able to get six, seven uses out of one piece of tape. So it's just a matter of kind of until it's not sticking to your vinyl anymore, keep using it. Don't waste your money. You can make a roll of transfer tape last for months. I do all sorts of vinyl and all sorts of projects, and I can usually keep an entire roll of transfer tape for six months. So just make sure that you're reusing that transfer tape to save yourself just a little bit of money. One thing that you're going to see a lot is mentions of stabbing your blade into tinfoil to sharpen it. This will never sharpen your blade because it is a soft metal and you have to sharpen blades with metal that is harder than the blade. But it will actually clean it from any debris. So if you've been using a lot of adhesive vinyl, HTV, things like that, you will end up with a little bit of residue on your blade and that can actually cause your cuts to not be so great. So what I recommend is keep that tinfoil ball, but just know that all you're doing is cleaning your blade, which is a good thing to do. It helps keep your blade nice and easy, and it's just such a simple task. But just know that that never will sharpen your blade. Now, I do recommend grabbing some extra blades. You won't really need to replace your blades for probably a couple of months, but it's always good to have extra. I'll be honest, when I got this maker, I had a lot of problems cutting right out of the box. And it turns out that the blade that was sent to me was damaged. So having those extra blades was really helpful and made my life so much less frustrating. I was getting really frustrated, didn't understand why my Cricut Maker, which was brand new, was not cutting vinyl. And it just was so frustrating and I just couldn't figure it out. Finally, I just changed the blade on a whim and everything worked perfectly. As I examined the blade that came with my Cricut Closer, the tip of my blade wasn't there. So it was cutting on a very blunt edge. Now, whether that happened at the factory or whether it happened in packing or whether it happened in transit, I'll never know. But by having those extra blades on hand, it really saved me a lot of grief and months of aggravation trying to work with a brand new machine. So I do recommend grabbing some extra blades. I like the ones that 143 Vinyl sells. You can also find some on Amazon. So I'll link all those below, the ones that I use and know are good quality blades. But it's always good to have extras. You'll hear a lot of people talking about calibration, and calibration is how to tell your machine and kind of make it learn where it needs to cut. However, the calibration is only used to, for print then cut and for the knife blade with the maker. It has nothing to do with cutting vinyl or anything like that. It's only for print then cut and the knife blade. So just know that if somebody tells you to calibrate your machine, if you're having trouble cutting vinyl, it's not gonna do you any good. It won't have any effect on your vinyl cutting. It's only gonna have effects with the printing and cutting and the knife blade. It really gets the depth of the knife blade and then for print and cut, it really figures out where your registration lines are and where it needs to cut to line up with your item that you're printing out and cutting around.
Another great tip to not waste vinyl, don't cut down your vinyl to fit your decal before you cut it. Actually just put the entire sheet or even the entire roll onto your mat and you can actually leave the rolled up part of your vinyl just hanging off the end of your mat and that way you can just not waste so much vinyl. I found that as I was cutting, I would cut a lot bigger than I really needed just to be safe. And by leaving it on the sheet or on the roll, I was able to really cut a lot closer to my decal and that way I wasn't wasting nearly as much vinyl and it was just coming out a lot cleaner. This is a super easy thing that you can do just to kind of help yourself save yourself some materials, some time, and some aggravation. Now, as you're cutting your vinyl and your HTV, you will notice that sometimes you get really thin lines for your designs and they don't always want to stick. And the reason for that is the less vinyl you have, the less adhesive you have to stick to your surface. So as you're trying to stick something down, if you have a very, very thin line, there's very little adhesive on it, so it's gonna have a really hard time staying down, especially if you're putting it on something that's gonna be washed a lot, like a mug. So keep that in mind when you're doing it. There's lots of tips and tricks to get around that and to help it stick down better by thickening fonts, thickening designs, and things like that using offset. And you can even just make offsets to help the vinyl stick to vinyl. It's gonna stick a little bit better to vinyl than it might to glass. So just keep that in mind. I have lots of videos showing you some thin lines and things like that and how to work with thin fonts, but just know that the thinner the design, the thinner the font, the less adhesive you're gonna have. So you're gonna to need to be a little bit more careful. Working with the Cricut, you are going to learn an entirely new language. There are so many different terms that we use here in crafting that people don't always know. Things like kerning, burnish, SVG, JPG. There are so many different terms, and I have a video that goes over a lot of those terms, which I will link in the video's description. I'll put a card up here for one too. But there's just a lot to learn, so you're gonna probably feel overwhelmed, but never fear, you can always ask someone, hey, what does this mean? What is this? And there are so many helpful people in the crafting community besides myself and everybody else. We all just want everyone to enjoy crafting as much as we do. So be sure to just ask. If you don't understand something, Google it. Ask someone, check YouTube. There's gonna be something that's gonna explain to you what the item is, how to work with it, what it means. So that's gonna be something that you are probably going to be like, Oh my goodness, I don't know what anybody's talking about, but you'll pick it up very quickly. And I promise once you know it, it's going to be like secondhand nature to you to just speak in crafting. Now, one thing to note that I'm not sure a lot of people realize when they purchase a Cricut is the print and cut size is limited to 6.75 inches wide and 9.25 inches high. This is a little bit smaller of a space. So if you are somebody who is going to be doing print and cut all the time, you might want to look into some other options like the Silhouettes or the StarCraft Solo. They have a much larger print area and it might be something to think about if you are going to do a sticker business or just print and cut constantly. You're going to waste a lot of materials using a Cricut. Now the print and cut on Cricut is fine, it works, it's not bad, it's just a small area and if you are doing something where you want to make money off of it, the more items you can fit on a piece of material, the better you are, you're going to waste a lot less. But that's something that I don't think is really put out there too often when people are looking at purchasing the Cricut is just keep that in mind that print and cut size is pretty small. Now, if you got your Cricut and you want to start a business, that's awesome. But one thing I will definitely caution you with is make sure that you practice the items that you want to sell before you ever start selling. Make things for friends and family, make things as gifts, give them to your neighbors, but practice, 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 and test them out. When you make shirts, wash them a bunch of times, wash them different ways. Check and make sure that what you have done is going to last. If you make mugs, wash them. Just make sure that you have tested everything out and that you know that the product that you're putting out into the world is a quality product and it's going to last. If you put out products out right away and they're not great and they're not lasting, that's going to be detrimental to your business in the future. Once people lose trust in a business, they're pretty much never going to come back. So you want to make sure that your quality product is straight from the beginning and you know what you're doing. If someone ever asks you to make something and you've never done it before, be upfront with them. If you've started your business and they say, I want you to make this, well, I'm sorry, you know, I've never made that before, but I would be happy to try. 
If they're uncomfortable with you not having made it before, they'll be honest and say, well, that's okay, I'll go somewhere else. And a great thing is to partner with somebody who does another type of business. And that way if somebody comes to you and says, I'm looking for an epoxy tumbler, you can say, you know, I don't do epoxy tumblers, but my friend Jane does. And Jane, who doesn't do HTV on shirts, if someone comes to Jane and says, you know, Jane, I'm looking for an HTV shirt, can you do that? You know, I don't do HTV, but my friend Carrie does. So you're gonna be able to kind of share those business moments with someone else. So that's something to think about as you are starting that business. And also make sure that you check with your state about all the different laws for businesses. Each state is so different. So even if you ask on like a Facebook group, they may not really know. So your best bet is to go directly to the state, give them an email, give them a call. There's gonna be somebody that can walk you through the process and help you out with starting your business the legal way. Another thing I want you to think about is when you're on the internet, really think about where the information that you're getting is coming from. Not everybody's giving out the best information or advice. So you want to make sure that you find a trusted source that you know knows their stuff, whether that is somebody on YouTube like myself or some of the other crafters, whether that's a friend who's been doing this for a long time, whether that's the company directly, there are lots of options. I absolutely love working with my Cricut. I love working with my Silhouette. I love working with my Solo. I am excited to be able to bring these videos to you. And I hope that this video really helped you guys kind of learn a few things about getting started with your Cricut and some of the things that you should look out for or know about when you get started. I seriously wish there was a video like this before I bought mine. I feel like I would have struggled just a little bit less and then I wouldn't have been so frazzled when I got mine or so afraid of mine. It took me about a month to open my box, so please don't be me. Open your box as soon as you can, get that machine out, and start making stuff. It's not all gonna be beautiful, trust me. Some of my first projects were hideous, but we learn as we go and we learn as we grow. So the more that you do, the better you will be. So don't be afraid to mess up. It's totally okay. And honestly, I highly recommend taking pictures of some of your first projects, even if they're awful. It's really fun to go back and look at where you started and see how far you have come. And it really makes you realize, wow, I've learned so much and I have changed so much in whatever amount of time it's been. And I'm so excited for you guys to get your crickets out of your boxes, to start learning, to start making. I cannot wait to see all of the beautiful things that you make. And that being said, I would love to have you join my Facebook group. You can show me all of your pretty stuff. I would love to see it. I absolutely love being able to answer your questions there as well. It's a little easier to get a hold of me on Facebook in that group, and there are tons of people in the group that are willing to help you as well. So don't hesitate to reach out and ask those questions. Be sure to ask any questions that you have to me. I'm super happy to help you guys out. This is the end of the video, so thank you so much for sticking around. Again, make sure you subscribe. You can be part of my crafty family here on YouTube. It is totally free to subscribe. There is no cost to it whatsoever. The Facebook group is also free, so feel free to join. I will add you as soon as possible. I'm so excited that you guys chose to check out this video, and thank you for sticking around and learning a little bit more about the things you need to know when you get started with your Cricut. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and as always, happy crafting. Thank you.